coming at you with another Ikea hacks finally. Yes, 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 yes. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and today I have another Ikea hacks video for you. I'm obsessed with Ikea and you guys really seem to like the Ikea hacks that I do on my channel and I love making the Ikea hacks. One of my favorite things is just knowing I'm doing one of these videos and going to Ikea and spending like 18 hours there then putting all the stuff into my car, leaving it in my car for about a week so my car smells like Swedish meatballs and cardboard and Ikea, just the scent of it, you know? It just has a specific smell. And besides the point, I'm doing an Ikea hacks video for you today. I'm going to be taking stuff from Ikea and just turning it into new things. I'm really excited because today's video will actually have some furniture. I have a basketball hoop, which yes, I know kind of sounds crazy, but you guys are gonna see it. It's actually really chic and really fun. I have a super fun hanging pendant like that looks so pretty and so like urban outfitters anthropology inspired, which I think is going to be perfect for anyone that loves that kind of like bohemian urban space. And I'm just excited for you guys to see this. And and if you have not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new videos every single week so you can get your daily dose of DIY. And if you'd like to, you can also follow me on Lone Fox Home on Instagram or you can follow my personal Instagram where I share more of my fashion um, and that is I'm Drew Scott, which I'll put on the screen right here. But without further ado, I think we should jump on into today's Ikea hacks because they're really good ones and I'm so excited for you guys to see them. So let's just get started. Alrighty guys, so kicking off this video with a super, super simple project, we're using the Trampa doormat, and for additional supplies, you're just gonna be needing some black paint and a paintbrush of your choice, and this is all gonna be freehand. It's super simple and easy, and honestly guys, you can find so many funny doormat ideas on Google if you type in doormat. Um, ideas, I guess you could say. I just think that some of them are so cute. So basically what I did was I used a paintbrush and I used the width of the paintbrush to actually do the letter, like the line blocking on each letter. So I spelled out the word hello in the bottom left hand corner. So when someone goes up to your door, they're going to be greeted with the word hello, of course. So I just used my black paint and with this uh, kind of doormat texture, I suggest kind of stippling the paint down into the actual mat because I find that it, you get a better color payoff that way. And I just simply went all the way around and then I let it dry and then I did one more coat of it on there just to really get it locked in there and as you can see I'm kind of pressing and stippling downwards to get that color payoff to be really dark and very opaque and then I flip the mat over and I'm gonna put goodbye on the opposite side that way when your guest leaves they're gonna read goodbye in their direction when they leave so it's kind of like a double meaning doormat I guess you could say I think it's really cute and fun so I did goodbye on this side again I freehanded it but if you want to you could get like letter stencils um, or you can just print out the word and kind of just trace around it cut it out um, and have a little bit more of a simplistic look but I just freehanded it and I think it turned out great This is probably one of my favorite projects in the video for sure, and I'm using the Stockholm 2017 tray, which is actually currently on sale at Ikea for $24.99, but I did have one in my own collection, so I just pulled that one out and used it. I'm also using three hairpin legs from Amazon and some strong bond adhesive, which I will link those below for you guys. And all I started off by doing was flipping over my tray, and I'm gonna be gluing down these hairpin legs in a kind of triangular shape. And what I suggest doing is adding glue to the bottom side, because essentially these are supposed to be screwed on to like your item but the tray is not that thick so I just decided to glue it down and then make sure that you add glue into those holes and kind of make sure it overflows over the top which is kind of gonna act as almost like a reinforcement for that leg to stay on there but this glue is super super strong bond I actually buy it at Michaels it's like I live by this I use it all the time on my projects I think it's amazing but just get it in those holes glue it down in all three sections and then I suggest just letting it dry overnight and then once you are completely done you have a perfect little side table or nightstand whatever you want to use as it could even be a plant stand. Now this is a little bit of a different project for my channel, but I thought it was cute for like a boys room or something. So I'm using the Lindrande circular object and whatever the name of this 
bag is. And also for additional supplies, just some scissors and hot glue. So I'm pulling out the Lindrande circular object and I'm constructing it. You just have to twist it into the base. And then once that is done, I pulled apart my little market bags. Um, and these are just little mesh like market bags you can take with you, I guess, to like the farmer's market or something. And I'm actually cutting the whole net portion off of the handle. And we're going to be using both of these. So make sure to cut it really nice and cleanly. So I just use my fabric scissors and I cut around to create this net. And when you take it off, it's actually a rectangle shape, which is perfect because we're going to be gluing the rectangle shape around the base of the circle because we're going to be creating a little like cute, chic, minimal basketball hoop. And you're just going to go around the outside edge of this and glue it down. I just um, add like a little tack of glue at every intersection and then I glue the opposite intersection onto it. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory and I actually think I say self-explanatory so much. I need to make merch that says it's pretty self-explanatory because it seems to be my favorite thing to say and you guys have been <laughs> suggesting that in the comment section, which I think is so funny. And once it is completely attached, I just glued the start and the finish kind of up towards the base of the basketball hoop. And then what I did was I glued together the net so that it created a circle because at the moment it was kind of had an open back and you're just gonna glue the pieces together. It's really easy. Uh, you're just gonna connect them up and you're going to basically stitch this back together. And then what I did was I cut the little bottom portion off and I cut in between each of the little uh, like squares that it has on the net. That way you have a clean edge. And then lastly, I used the handle portion because because the net at the bottom just looked kind of unfinished. So I used the handle, handle portion kind of as a little bit of a sealant, I guess, for the bottom or just to make it look a little bit cleaner. So I just wrapped that around the bottom portion, cut off the excess, and it just overall gave it a little bit more of a finished look. And then all you have to do is glue on a little string to hang it up. And I suggest gluing this as high as you can. That way it doesn't stick that far off the wall. saving my personal favorite project for last. We are starting off with this woven snitted basket. I think this is pretty new to IKEA's collection or not super new, but definitely within the last year. And I'm also using one of the Hema hanging cords. And for additional supplies, you're gonna need wire cutters and some hemp cording as well. So I'm starting off with my wire cutters and I'm basically gonna be cutting the handles off this basket. You could leave them on if you wanted to, but I really wanted it to have the appearance that this was created as a pendant light shade and not a basket turned into a pendant light shade. So you just have to go across and cut these off. Um, I suggest wire cutters because they kind of uh, grip onto this caning a little bit easier and it just cuts it super simply. And then all you have to do is just pull off all those pieces and kind of tuck up a little bit. There are a couple of nails in there. Once you pull it off, you have these handles. And I actually kept these handles because I can definitely use these on future projects if I need handles somewhere um, and just kind of recreate this sort of caning effect. So I did the same thing on the opposite side by taking off the handles. Once those handles were removed, I flipped the basket over and we're gonna have to create a bit of an opening because these sections at the bottom are too close together to fit the cord through. So all I did was I used my wire cutters to just cut in that downward motion directly diagonal across from each other. So I cut out two sections, as you can see here, cut out one and two, and it's super simple to cut these out. You're just creating a little bit of a larger gap. Then I flipped it completely 180 and I did the opposite side as well by cutting out um, the inside section here just to create an opening where we can put the cord. This is kind of what it looks like once those are done. So this is the cord that we're using and I'm gonna feed it up through the bottom and up through the top, I guess you could say. And then once it's all the way up, I'm putting it back down. We're wrapping this around the center section so that way we can get the light really centered in there. And I flipped it over in order just to tie it right at the base here. And then I'm actually going to feed the cord back through so that you're able to hang it. So you're going to feed it back through so that the cord is going through the top portion of the basket. And then the light's going to be in there. And then the cord is on the top. And I use a little bit of hemp cording up here just to kind of blend in and kind of camouflage with the actual basket. And I just tied it in a couple of knots. That way it stayed nice and secure up there. And then I screwed an Edison bulb and you have a perfect little hanging pendant light. Those are 
all of my Ikea hacks for today. I hope that you guys did enjoy them and I hope I gave you some inspiration of things you could do with your current items that you might have in your house that you're just kind of over with because I know sometimes I buy things and then after like a year, I'm just like, what can I do with this? What can I reinvent it to make? I'm also gonna make sure to link everything that I did use in the description box below in case you do wanna take a look um, or purchase it for yourself. And then of course, all of the Ikea names and stuff was throughout the video. So drop those down if you wanna recreate some of these items and I hope that you did enjoy. I would love to know which was your favorite project. Honestly, if I don't have a use for it right now, but it would be that pendant light. I just absolutely love the way that it turned out, but I actually do have a use for that side table. I'm gonna put it right next to my bed, new nightstand, so excited about that. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I upload brand new videos. And you can also follow me on Instagram, which is Lone Fox Home, where I post more behind the scenes type stuff, and then also some additional just home inspiration over there. So thank you guys again. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye guys.